Man, backpacking cook kits can get complicated quick. Hey, try saying that five times fast. But today, I'm gonna to show you how to simplify your backpacking cook kit and create a kit that will last you for years to come for less than 100 bucks. Let's get to it. Hey folks, welcome to another video. My name is Jeremy, and this channel is all about outdoor adventure. I'm talking everything from backpacking, hiking, hunting, and awesome gear. If you're into any of that, please consider subscribing and clicking that bell so you don't miss a thing. In a recent video, I talked about five of the biggest gear mistakes that I see beginner and experienced backpackers make all the time, and I was no exception. So spoiler alert, in that video, overly complicated cook systems made the list. And clearly, there's no shortage of gear for cook systems. So it's very, very easy to get complicated fast. So to cut down on the complication, here are the factors that I consider when building a cook system for any given purpose. So number one, what type of cooking are you planning to do? Are you going to be a, a backcountry gourmet or are you gonna rehydrate meals? Number two, what is your average group size? Are you going solo? Are you going with a group? Are you sharing cook responsibilities and cooking gear? Three, environment. What altitude are you gonna be at? Are you expecting snow? Is there a burn ban? So before we dive too much more into that, let's do a quick review of the most popular cook systems out there right now. So let's start off with liquid fuel stoves. An example of a liquid fuel stove is this MSR Whisper Light International. Basically takes a liquid fuel, such as propane, kerosene. In this case, you could throw pretty much any liquid fuel in here, pump it up, and it's gonna work. This system is highly reliable. It's gonna work practically in any weather condition anywhere in the world. Fuel is easy to find. They have good to great flame control. So if you are that backcountry gourmet, this may be the system for you. A liquid fueled system such as this can be expensive. This stove in particular is gonna run 150 to 200 US dollars, not including the fuel canister. They're also pretty loud. As you can see, there are a fair amount of parts that might need maintenance. So these have a much higher maintenance cost. You're gonna to have to maintain these O-rings and different things. There's also a repair kit, which also makes it heavier and bulkier. But this is considered more of an expedition system. So the bulkiness and the, the slightly heavier weight may be mitigated by the high reliability factor. You'll have to judge for yourself. Next up, it's a canister stove. So this is a BRS 3000T with an Isopro MSR fuel canister. This is a really inexpensive system. This system is also very reliable in three season use. These also have a relatively fast boil time, generally between the two and a half to four minute mark. They also have good flame control, a couple more pros, relatively cheap fuel and widely available. You can pick these up in just about any camping store or sporting goods store. If you're traveling, especially by airplane, you will not be able to take this. You will have to buy your fuel at your destination. So that might be a deal breaker for you. You have to weigh that in. Some other cons, again, they're loud. Not as loud as something like the Whisper Light, but it is still going to kind of sound like a, a little mini jet engine. Some other cons, you kind of waste the canisters. These aren't recyclable. And last con that I can't speak to right now is possible poor performance in cold weather. In a future video, I'm going to put that to the test. So for right now, I'm gonna chalk that up to unproven, but I'll only list this as three plus seasons, perhaps. You know, so definitely in the shoulder seasons, I think this would be just fine. So let's move on to our next system of stoves, which are alcohol stoves. You have a couple of different options here. This is a commercial option from So Light. So this is one that I made out of a Guinness can and a Coke can. It has a built-in pot stand that's just held on by some aluminum heat tape uh, so that I can take that off and repair that as needed. So the pros of alcohol burning stoves, they are extremely light. This one in particular comes in at half an ounce, about 18 grams. Alcohol stoves are completely silent. So if you don't like the noise of a jet engine while you're boiling water, 
an alcohol stove might be for you. This stove runs off of denatured alcohol, which you can find any place. You're gonna be able to find fuel any place in the world for this type of stove. And obviously, there's no moving parts on this, so there is virtually no maintenance on this stove. Now cons, it's not all roses and daisies with, with an alcohol burning stove. They're slower to boil. It can be hard to gauge how much fuel you need, especially if you're not using a fuel bottle like this, which has a built-in measuring device. It also suffers from very poor performance in the wind. So you're probably gonna to have to use some form of windscreen to pair with your alcohol stove, which is gonna increase the weight slightly. All right, so that was just a, a quick and dirty review of what I consider, in my opinion, the most popular fuel systems. Now you're thinking, geez, Jeremy, I, I just wanna know how to build that $100 kit. What, where do we start? Let's start by asking a couple of questions. Number one, what type of cooking are you gonna be doing? For me, I wanna get out, I wanna go a little bit faster, maybe go a little bit farther. When I get to camp, I don't want to have to do a lot of meal prep. So I'm taking some form of dehydrated meal. So for either one of these, I need to, to boil two to four cups of water. So the next question to ask yourself, what's your average group size? Are you going solo? Are you going with a group but still cooking solo? Or are you going with a group where you're having a community kitchen? For me and my kit, I'm generally going solo. Or if I am going with a group, I'm still cooking solo. So the next thing you have to consider is environmental factors. What's your altitude? For this kit, I'm assuming an altitude of greater than 5,000 feet, mainly because that's where I normally do most of my backpacking these days. What's the weather like? I haven't gotten into winter camping a lot. That will change this year, so I'm gonna be doing a lot more winter camping in the coming weeks. But for this system, I'm going to assume that you're gonna be backpacking three seasons and maybe getting into the shoulder seasons in late fall, early spring. So you might get some colder weather. Another environmental factor to consider, burn bans. May not be a factor where you're from. Here in the Mountain West, we're going to have burn bans generally every summer. So for this system, I'm going to assume that we will have to deal with a burn ban at some point in time. So to recap our assumptions, we are assuming that you're rehydrating meals because it's easier or you're a beginner or you just don't wanna deal with the fuss of preparing meals. We are going solo with a group or solo by ourselves. We're hiking at or above 5,000 feet. We're gonna do that through early spring to late fall and we're going to assume that there's gonna be a burn ban during the summer. So with those assumptions, we can immediately get rid of a lot of this gear. We can say goodbye to our liquid fuel stove. These big pots and pans, we don't need them. For me, just weighs too much and it doesn't, doesn't give us all the good benefits that, that we need. So I'm getting rid of this and not recommending this. This has been one of my go-to pots for a long time. It is one full liter, so it's gonna meet that, that four cups, but it's kind of bulky. If I'm taking my family, I'm taking this pot. So if I'm cooking for other people and I'm responsible for hydrating their meals as well, this is coming with. That is not part of our assumption in this case. I'm going solo or solo with a group. So I'm getting rid of my trusty, trusty, ever new pot. So in terms of pots, we're down to two choices. We're gonna hold on making that choice until we select our stove system. So moving into our stoves, we're between an alcohol burning stove and a canister stove. Depending on your experience, you can make a good case for either one of these. I love the alcohol burning stove. It's lighter weight. I love the fact that it's silent. I have a good way to measure fuel, so that's not an issue for me. But I don't think this is the best stove to start backpacking with. If you're just starting out, I think a canister stove is a much better option, especially since they've gotten a lot cheaper. So I'm gonna suggest going with a canister stove similar to the BRS 3000T with the, with the small fuel canisters you're rarely going to need a fuel canister larger than this. So always go with the smallest size. So let's clear away all of the alcohol stoves. Now that we've selected our stove, 
it's time to narrow down our pots. You really can't go wrong with either of these pots. If I were taking an alcohol stove, I would probably go with the 550 milliliter pot. Both of these pots can fit these small fuel canisters inside without a problem. However, on this 550, you can't fit your, your stove inside. And to me, that's a deal breaker. So I'm leaving the 550 milliliter pot at home when I'm going solo with a canister stove. We have a couple of other things that we want to do here. With any of these titanium toks pots, I'm going to recommend a set of hot lips. So Snow Peak makes these. They clip right on the edge and they make drinking a lot easier so that you don't actually burn your, your lip because that's no fun. So I'm going to throw in a set of hot lips. It's nice to have a backup. You can certainly leave the other one at home. The other nice thing about these hot lips, since they're silicone, you can pick up the hot pot very easily without actually burning your fingers. The other thing that I'm going to recommend in our camp kitchen is a small towel. It makes cleaning out the pot very easy and also serves as a, as a nice uh, hot pot handle. Last thing that we have to consider, utensils. The age old debate do you go with the spork? Have you ever used a spork? Have you, have you really ever used the tines on the spork? Ask yourself that. Or some spoons. All three of these are very similar in weight. 10 grams, 12 grams, and 18 grams. I'm actually going with the heavier spoon option. Why I'm choosing the long handled heavier titanium spoon is if you see the line here, you see the tear line. I want a spoon that's going to reach all the way to the bottom so that my hand doesn't have to get food on it because then I don't have to clean up myself at all. So this comfortably reaches all the way to the bottom of this pouch and keeps my hand clean. And to me, that's a good morale boost in the backcountry. So I'm taking the heavier spoon in my cook kit. So these other guys, we'll toss them to the side. Let's review what we have. We have taken all that clutter and have simplified it to this, which is much more manageable. We're going to start off with the BSR 3000T canister stove, $16.95 on Amazon. I'll have links below. A Tox 750 milliliter titanium pot, $34.95 on Amazon. A Tox titanium spoon, long handled, $10.95 on Amazon. Snow Peak Hot Lips. $6.95. Our REI multi towel, about $10. And a fuel canister. This is the MSR Isopro. Retails for about $4.95. You don't have to go with that. You can get them as cheap as $3.99. So this kit fits entirely into the pot. We take the fuel canister, put the plastic cap back on, flip the pot upside down to place it in. If you do that, you're going to avoid a rust ring in the bottom of your pot because of the moisture in the pot. Do yourself a favor, that's a little pro tip. Now we have a nice little place. I'm gonna put my towel inside. I'm gonna put our BRS on our towel, a little Bic lighter on our towel, our two hot lips in the towel. We're gonna fold the towel over and put our lid on. Tokes is nice enough to give us this kind of heavy, in my opinion, it's about a half an ounce, uh, mesh stuff sack. But we're going to use it because it doesn't add a ton of weight and it's nice to reduce the sound of a jostling cook kit because there's nothing more distracting on the trail than having Samwise Gamgee behind you clanking away with the noisy cook kit. This cook kit, all said, less than $85, $394. Grams just 13.8 ounces. I lied. I forgot to throw the spoon on top. 14 and a half ounces, 410 grams for less than $85. You're not going to find a much lighter weight kit than that. This is a fantastic simplified cook kit that's lightweight and will last you for years to come. Question of the day. 
What would you do differently to simplify this cook kit or really any cook kit? Leave a comment below. I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts. So that about does it for this video. If you have found it helpful and encouraging, please share it with a friend, give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna see more videos like this, please consider subscribing to the channel and clicking that bell so you don't miss a thing. And until next time, Psalms 34.4.